my name is Rachel Neese, otherwise known as a beauty professor, and I am so happy to be with you guys today to share with you my best of beauty for 2021. This is a list that I take very seriously. I test so many products all year long, and I want to make sure that this video is representative of truly the very best, in my opinion, of what's out there in the vast sea, otherwise known as the beauty industry. Now that I have taken complete and honest inventory of what I have to share with you guys, I've decided that I'm going to have a second video that will focus on skincare, wellness, hair care, etc. This video will be expressly dedicated to my favorite makeup of 2021. And then I will film the other video right after I'm done with this one and share it with you guys in another day or two. I've decided to start with the category of foundation today because in so many ways, it is the foundation of Beauty Professor, pun intended. I started my blog 10 years ago now. I cannot believe we're celebrating an entire decade of Beauty Professor being in existence. I'm so grateful. When I started the blog, I was just on the hunt for the best foundation for me. And in the process, I was eager to share that quest with my readers and then later followers and give you guys as many swatches of everything as humanly possible. And I've been so grateful for all of the foundation formulas I've been able to try and share with you guys. I have so many full spectrum shade swatches for you guys on Beauty Professor. It's a massive database of swatches for as many shades as I can get my hands on. And so I'll be making sure to link to those as we go along. In Southern California, we've had a lot of gloomy weather and a lot of rain, and that's a good thing on one level, but it's not conducive to shooting beautiful in the sunlight swatches. So I'd love to show you guys static images of swatches of everything. I'm just going to have to link to previous reviews of the products over the years that have those sunlight swatches because I wasn't able to take them this week with the way the sun has been and the way the weather has been. So to begin with, my first formulation I want to share with you for base is the Le Metier de Beauté Peau Vierge. This is a tinted, luminizing base that adds the most ethereal glow to the face without being overtly shimmery. It evens your complexion, it adds a nice cloak of hydration. It comes in multiple shades. My mom wears it just alone by itself as her standalone base. For me, I typically wear it under a foundation, but it's great on minimum makeup days as well, just by itself. So it's an invaluable part of my routine. Wanted to talk about it right off the top because it's always the first thing for me after skincare. Next is the Suku Nude Wear Liquid EX. This is a foundation with a really liquidy consistency. It comes with a dropper. Uh, my best shade right now is 035. I can also wear 040 in the summer. Suku makes some of the most beautiful bases known to humanity. They are all exquisite, so it's always hard for me to just pick one. But this one, I'm like down to here on. I'm almost out of it, so I think that's a good one to show you guys just because I use it so much. It creates medium coverage. You'd never guess it by how thin it is blends into the skin like a second skin. So you never see any lines of demarcation. It just gives you a soft glow, beautiful coverage, and a lasting finish. Another foundation that's on my face frequently, and I talk about it all the time, is the Clay de Peau Beauté Radiant Cream Foundation. This is in the shade 050 for me. I also sometimes mix it with 040, and it is so creamy a little bit, seriously, a pea-sized amount goes a long way to give you medium to medium full coverage that just lasts. It's so stunning, very velvety on the skin, and I hope to never be without it for these reasons. I've been using the new Lisa Eldridge foundation for the last couple of months. I ordered it right when it launched. My shade is number 17. It's great for medium skin with an olive undertone. It doesn't oxidize or get too dark, after you've applied it, it's kind of like the color that you see when you put it on and then tap it in is the color that it remains all day, which is nice. And for me, it gives it light to medium coverage that looks really fresh and flawless. It's got a natural finish and I find that it lasts all day for me. So on days when I just want a pump and a half of quick foundation, this is what I've been grabbing. I've been sharing the Valentino foundation off and on a beauty professor for the last few months since I picked it up. I wear the shade MA4, which is a great medium olive shade. And I find that a single pump 
gives me the coverage, the look, and the lasting power that I'm looking for. This was kind of a slow burn for me. When I first tried it, I was like, hmm, it's pretty good, but I wasn't grabbing it frequently. Then the more I started using it, the more I started loving it. There's just something very flawless about it. I will say you want to make sure your skin is well hydrated in advance, but that's probably the case for all foundations. But you definitely want to do that because I wouldn't call it particularly moisturizing, but it's not a dry foundation. So once I put it over my primed face, I am good to go all day. If you are on the hunt for a great stick foundation, the Westman Atelier foundation is excellent. The learning curve with this one is just finding your right shade, your correct shade. There's a great shade lineup. For me, I wear the number seven VII for most of the year, though I have a few shades in rotation and it just depends on how much sun I've received or where I'm at in the seasons. But overall, it's just a really easy to work with foundation. It's something you can share out or build up to full coverage. And I find that it works best with either my fingers or a beauty sponge. Next is the Orsay Come Closer Skin Perfecting Foundation. I wear either 040 or 050, this is 040. And this is one of those foundations where a single pump will take you through the entire day. I think this bottle will last me a lifetime, seriously, because all I ever use is a pump and I never need to touch up. It has a beautiful serum-like consistency. It dries down to a natural finish, does not settle into fine lines, simply lovely. Next is a, is a very well-loved jar of the Viteri Eclat Opulant. This is in the shade 100 Warm Radiance, which is my match for the whole year. It only comes in three shades currently, but they're pretty versatile in terms of the way they morph into your skin tone. So for me, this just like a dollop creates the most velvety texture on the skin. You somehow get this evening of the skin, the complexion, but it looks like you have nothing on your face. And I think it works well for skin of all ages, especially skin types, textures, and ages that haven't traditionally enjoyed foundation because it just hydrates the skin really luxuriously and makes it look like you have just had a great night's sleep and a lot of water. Next is the Monica Blender Beauty Blender Cover. This is a cream foundation that comes in a nice array of shades. I typically wear for 0.5 for most of the year. It's great for my olive skin. And this is a really versatile foundation, fragrance-free, creamy and buildable, and you can get it up to full coverage. You can treat it like a concealer if you want, but you can also have a very sheer application. You can mix it into a medium, like a moisturizer as well. It's just got so many uses. It's created by a makeup artist and you can super tell that by its versatility. I also really love the Lawless Conceal the Deal Foundation. This is the newest foundation formulation from Lawless and I have it right here in sandalwood, but I do have a few shades in rotation depending on the time of year. It's an ultra liquidy foundation and it's very thin. You wouldn't expect that it builds to medium full coverage very quickly because it's so liquidy, but if you apply it with a brush, which is my favorite way of doing it, Annie makes a great brush that is a good companion to this, you get this completely flawless canvas. And for me, it lasts all day long. I don't have to touch up. I like this little bottle, so I might throw it in my purse anyway, but you don't have to because I never have to touch up with this one. My skin looks like porcelain. I'll be at a deeper shade of porcelain, but porcelain all day long. Another new foundation launch that I've been using a lot is the Sisley Fido Taunt Nude. This is a water light texture that offers very seamless second skin coverage. A few drops, I just rub it in and I am always stunned by how easily and effortlessly it perfects my complexion without the slightest bit of conspicuousness. It's just a really lovely foundation from Sisley. I opened with a really sheer base and I'm going to close with one in this category. And this is the Ibu Beauty Mooncast. It's a hydrating, tinted moisturizer. It's got a very light tint that just in a seamless way blends into the complexion. My match is the medium dark one. There's also one that's a little bit lighter than this. And truly these two shades work with all skin tones and complexions, which is really interesting. If you're just looking for a quick way to very rapidly perfect your complexion with a sheer wash of color, this is great. 
when I think about complexion, I cannot go without discussing these two gems from Saint Cosmetics. I used the Sunkissed Bronzer and the Froze Blush so many times during the week. It's been included in lots of my content this last year. Both are just beautiful, versatile, clean beauty products. So I can't say enough good things about them. They are staples in my routine, well-loved, highly recommend them. A gorgeous launch for this year that has received a lot of love over here is the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. This is for face and eyes, and I use the dark one. Most of all, the light one is lovely as well, but I just love the tones in the dark one. The Glam Palette for eyes is a favorite over here as it is. The shades are just so versatile and pretty, lots of luminosity, and the face and eye palette does not disappoint in this category either. The blush is just this whisper soft velvety blush. You've got a gorgeous luminous highlighter, and then I love mixing these shimmery shades with one of the brown shades for a really effortless, long-lasting eye. For quick contouring on the go, as well as blushing, I really have been appreciative of this combination. This is the M Cosmetics So Soft Stick in Summer. Wonderful true brown, so you can get that great contour going. It also warms up the face when you buff it out. And then this Au Naturale Stick in Paloma. Look at that great creamy peachy pink. It actually doesn't have any shimmer. It's just a true cream. The two colors play so well together, I can create a very quick face and the cream stays in place. Two more blushes that just light up the face include the Le Matier de Beauté Creme Fresh Tint in Toujours. You actually can't go wrong with any of the shades, but Toujours, which is the newest, is definitely a favorite. It's a rosy mauve that just a little goes a long way. It makes your cheeks look so bouncy and fresh and just looks good on all skin tones. And then I have this one on tonight. I've used it for years. This is not limited edition. It's the Chantecai Cheek Gelée in Happy. And it really is a happy color. It's like this luminous pink that is a perfect mix, equal parts of color and kind of a luminous highlighter. So your cheeks just look really like I said, bouncy, but not overly done. It's a very fresh and natural look. This has been one of my staples for many years now. For highlighter, a few formulations immediately come to mind. The first is the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. This is in shade 4.5. I have used four, I've gone through many bottles of four, but 4.5 is actually a better match for my skin tone. And I picked up this mini from Sephora. I love it because I keep it in my purse. It's lightweight and really a little goes a long way. So this is still gonna take me quite a while to get through, but this just gives your face a lovely luminosity that doesn't look shimmery, but makes your skin look really well moisturized. Every time I wear this, I feel like I get compliments on my skin and that's what you want when it comes to highlighter. Highlighter that I keep in my purse is the Galactic Glow on the Go. And this is in the shade Jet Setter. It's a great champagne shimmer that looks so lovely on the high points of the face. It's in this crayon or stick form and it's retractable, so no sharpening necessary. It's a genius product. I feel like Galactic always comes out with really creative things and this is one of them. Then finally, I wanna show you the iconic London Illuminator. This is in the shade Original. Go lightly with these. They're so reflective. You just need the tiniest bit. I mean, this is not even a drop. Look at this. It's really lovely alone on top of foundation or mixed into foundation because it is a liquid that's totally possible. And the original shade is my favorite. It's just a nice balance of cool and warm tones. It looks great on all complexions. To finish the complexion, I love the Fit Glow Beauty Concealer. This is a really pigmented situation. The tiniest dot completely takes care of my under eye region. Of course, I use the Clay de Peau concealer nonstop as well. I'll talk about that in my perennial favorites at the end of this video. But in terms of new discoveries, this Fit Glow is fantastic. It's a clean line and I find that the concealer does really well not sinking into fine lines while still completely 
balancing out, evening out the complexion. And it's one of those concealers that works equally well in the under eye region and on a blemish. And I feel like that's not always the case with concealers. I love my Armani Luminous Silk Glow Fusion Powder. This is my third or fourth compact of it. And this is in shade 5.5. I can also wear 6.5. This is one of the rare powders that I actually use the included brush with. <laughs> it comes in really handy. And I put it in my under eye region through here, just under here a little bit. It's one of those powders that definitely softly mattifies but does not take away your glow in fact it imparts a soft glow it's like a filter for your face then to finish my complexion i'm just at the very end of this one i have a new one on backup now this is the lawless glam guard i've never been much of a setting spray girl i don't feel like it's a necessity in my routine if you're using long lasting makeup but i appreciate this it's the finest clean mist super fine mist no aerosol and your skin just gets refreshed when you put it on, but it really does set your makeup all day. On to eyes. So the first palette I want to share with you is the Wayne Goss Luxury Palette. This is in Tourmaline, and I really like a lot of his palettes in this, in this range. So I picked one to show you today, but there's at least two or three that I use regularly because you have this soft shell pink, a nice, beautiful, radiant, pearly taupe, and then this extra sparkly gold, and then some deeper shades. So I feel like it's really versatile for a variety of complexions, this rosy situation that a lot of us are looking for when it comes to an eye palette. He has super large wells. Wayne always gives you lots of product in the compact. A shadow that is always in my purse is the Chantecai Mermaid Eye in Copper. This is a cream shadow with a kind of a dense feeling to it. Whoa, look at the color payoff. It's really, really potent, but the shade itself Copper sounds like it would be really warm. It's not. It's a gorgeous, luminous, neutral, kind of a tan shade, but light. It gives me a great 1960s eye. Anytime I want to just touch up my eye, I pop a little bit of this on and I love how it looks. So it's always in my purse. I'm about halfway through it and I'll hope to get it back up soon. I traveled quite a bit in the month of October and on one of my trips, I picked up the Charlotte Tilbury Luxury Palette of Pearls in Celestial Pearl. Every one of these shades is luminous and that's always my dream with the palette. I prefer the luminous over the matte. And these shades are like gossamer, very ethereal and light, very luminous. I kind of mix all four. I start with this brown shade, which is probably the most conservative color, and then work these other duochromes over my eye. It's just lovely it's a grown-up shimmer it's not like a teenage or a little kid shimmer so it feels really sophisticated it's just so pretty very pale light but not frosty rounding out my eyeshadows that i think for me are my favorites of the year are the iconic london glaze crayon and the laura mercier eye caviar now of course the colors for me really matter in this case both formulas are great but for me, this Nectar shade is just insane. It's such a color I love. This pinky peach color, it's a theme over here. So on one side, you get this crayon that once it sets, does not transfer. On the other side, you get a beautiful kind of liquid that complements it, that adds a little more glaze on top. And then it sets, so it's thinner, and then you just kind of pat it on. Another portable one, obviously, is this Laura Mercier Eye Caviar Stick. This is in Nude Rose, which is just that. Oh my gosh, this is an awkward angle, but it's a pinky nude rose foil that resists creasing. I feel like Laura Mercier Eye Caviar Sticks really last on me now. I don't know if I've changed or if the formula has been updated, but in all cases, I'm always stunned by how stalwart the formulation is. It just sits on the eyes so smoothly and it doesn't go anywhere all day. So go Laura Mercier. All right, I'm cleaning off my hand using my trusty Cogendo Spa Water Wipes. They are always here in my office with me when I travel in my handbag. I've used them for a literal 10 years. Nothing better. 
And yeah, I can use them for my face as well <laughs> when you need to. They definitely come in clutch. For mascara, and I'm wearing this one right now, yet again. This is the Lawless One and Done Mascara. I've gone through multiple tubes this year since its launch. It creates the most beautifully long, lush, thick lashes, false lash effect, clean formulation. For me, it does not budge. I know mascara is very personal, and so for some, you know, every formulation has its caveats for some. But for me personally, I have allergy ridden eyes, I wear contacts because I'm nearsighted. I've got a lot of strikes against me to invite a mascara to smudge or smear. This one does neither of those things. It truly stays in place. It's not waterproof, but even if I got in the water with it, as long as I don't rub my eyes, it really stays in place. But an absolute favorite this year. I recommend it all the time. I also love the updated version of the Kosas Big Clean. They updated it a few months ago and it really increased the lasting power. So this is another one that adds beautiful lash definition, length, volume, and it's a clean formula that doesn't budge either, especially. And despite loving a myriad of eyeliners, I'm just showing you two today because these are always in my handbag. The first is the Victoria Beckham Beauty Satin Kajal Liner in Ash. Ash for me is where it's at. It's an intense color. It seems almost black, but it's a little bit softer than black. It's not quite gray. It's not quite brown, but it has a touch of warmth. It's a very interesting dark shade. And I wear it on my waterline and it stays in place all day long. And because I just wear it here, this pencil is going to last me a long time. And then for liquid liner, I've been using a ton of the Byredo liquid liner. Ultra fine tip. You just kind of paint it right on and it's got a subtly glossy finish, but it's not shiny, it's just glossy. And it stays in place. I, once again, really give my liquid liners a run for their money. It, it stays in place all day. To wrap up the eyes, I want to share with you the thing that's been on my brows most in this last year. I have a lot of brow gels that I love and I could have probably done a whole nother video on that, maybe I will soon. But I would say the standout for me this year, and you can see how well loved and well used it is, is the Anastasia Brow Freeze. For half the year, I couldn't even get my hands on it. It was sold out, constantly sold out when I'd look for it. And then I was able to get it, I think in the summer, and I use it almost every day. I use it typically in conjunction with a brow gel, so I might use a little tint in my brows, and then I follow with this and a tight little spoolie applicator that I got with it. It creates a super laminated brow effect with very little effort. And for me, it stays in place. No flaking, no falling down. It's just a really well-executed product. Onto lip liner, we are officially in the lip category now. This is the Lancome Le Lip Liner in Mars. Mars for me just has it all. It is nude. There's a little rose to it. There's a little bronze to it. There's a little peachiness to it. It has a subtle, subtle shimmer. For me, it just works well with all my lip color or just alone by itself with a little gloss on top. This year also brought me the Huda Beauty Lip Contours. I have them in Sandy Beige and Honey Beige right here. I also, I thought I grabbed a Muted Pink, but it's still in my purse. That's the first one that I bought. I've purchased all of these myself, but I will say that they are so worth it to me. They're often sold out on the Sephora site, so get it when you can. This is a, just a little peek at Honey Beige. They are great because they're retractable. They're also super creamy and very long lasting, like waterproof level, but they just wear effortlessly on the lips. They don't get dry or weird looking. Here is the Crazy Beauty Lip Liner. This is an independent beauty line that I discovered this year. And this shade here is called Mauve Dahlia. It's a just a stunning, creamy, opaque, medium pink with a touch of mauve in it. I feel like it complements a lot of my nude lipsticks, which is why I love it so much. And it is retractable. It's got a rather robust tip here, so you can actually use it like an all over color if you wanted to. Anytime I can find a smaller brand and champion it because I love the products, it just makes me happy to do that. This is made in the USA. It's specifically a company in Huntington Beach, which is really close to me. And so I wanted to make sure to put this on your radar. Finally, for lip liner, here is the Beauty Pie Wonder Gel Long Wear Lip Liner in the shade Vanilla Nude. 
Whoa, I love the way this glides on. It's so soft and velvety and it it's a gel texture, but it stays in place. It's basically waterproof once you've applied it and let it dry down. And you can really build out the contour of your lips while making it look very natural. So if you're a bit of an overliner like I like to be, then this is a shade and a formulation that accommodates that. We're on to lip color and I have a handful to show you. So to pare it down to a list that's well under 10 is a major feat for me. I'm going to lead with my Au Natural Lip Stain in LA. It's right here. I started pre-swatching things. This is a shade that I created in collaboration with the brand. I am so proud of how it turned out and I wear it numerous times a week. It's one of those shades that even if I hadn't created it, I would obviously be wearing it because I love it. It just is the perfect blend of creaminess, a little luminosity, peach and pink. My dream blend, if you will, and it has great lasting power while having clean ingredients. So I actually have it on with a darker lip, Mars right now with Lancome Mars. This is the combination. It makes your lips look really full and it's long wearing, but like I said, hydrated. I want to call out a couple Tom Ford shades. This is Insatiable, which is a newer one for me that I picked up recently. It's a kind of a coral rosy nude. I feel like this will look good on a lot of complexions. I also have been wearing a lot of the Pink Charade, which is a cooler, mauve version of this. I left it in the other room, but those have been the two Tom Fords in my purse lately. I also picked up this Estee Lauder Pure Color Desire lipstick. It's a cream finish in the shade seduce it is a lovely very opaque blend of peach pink i don't think there's any luminosity in it to speak of it's more of a cream but it looks stunning on the lips it just fills everything in really nicely i'll try to add some on top here look at that this year i met a makeup artist who's based on the east coast her name is donna massa and she has her own line of lipsticks and she sent me over a few to try. One of my favorites that's always in my purse is this pinky shade called Southern Belle. It's like pink mauve and it has some frost to it, but in the very best way. I feel like Donna does frost so well with her colors. And this one just has a nice cream frost finish that makes your lips look full and plump. It's very pretty over a nude lip liner. The Lawless Platinum Lipstick. Now, Platinum was not one of my favorites in the lineup early on. I felt like it might be too light for me. I wear a lot of baby and I still carry baby in my purse all the time. Platinum became a favorite this year because it just does so well with a darker lip liner and that's a combination I've been enjoying. Also, it's got a nice neutral balance of peach and pink and beige. Something about it just looks amazing and it also makes your lips look really full if you concentrate it on the center of your lips. Then I have fallen in love with these, Lux, with these Lux Shine Intense Lipsticks from Bobbi Brown. I picked up one in Paris Pink and that's a brighter pink akin to some of the pinks I've shown you today. And I loved it so much that I went back and bought what was the closest kind of nude version of this formulation. This is called Bare Truth. It's obviously a deeper nude, but I think it's really sophisticated for the cooler months. It'll look good on a lot of skin tones. And because it's so opaque and shiny, it does make your lips look full, even though it's a deeper shade. The final lip color that I'm going to show you today in my favorites is this Armani lip power in the shade 103 androgyno i bought it after seeing it online i tried some deeper shades in this formulation and i like them because they kind of just lock onto the lips and create a nice glaze of color that doesn't move and it's got a lot of pigment but this pale shade was not in my lineup and so i bought it i like it it's peachy pink very neutral and very fresh it looks great with a darker lip liner once again that seems to be a theme over here and it's got some lovely lovely shine so this is my favorite in the lineup and i've used quite a bit of it you can see there i am closing today with my perennial favorites and these are products that i probably talk about in some capacity every year and keep adding to but they're products that aren't necessarily new, they're not necessarily new to me. They're just things that I've used and loved and repurchased time and again and consistently recommend. One of my perennial favorites for foundation is the La Prairie 
Skin Caviar Concealer Foundation. This is in the shade Mocha. I can also wear golden beige for a lot of the year. This obviously has this great paddle applicator. One bottle will last you a very long time, even with regular use. And it, it's just one of those foundations for me that always performs consistently. I travel with it because I know that no matter where I am, it's going to behave a very specific way on my skin and that's good. And I know my skin will appreciate it because there is skincare infused into this. I get medium natural coverage that lasts all day. My skin always looks fresher and healthier when I use it. And it does come with a coordinating concealer on top. Next, I want to show you my well-loved pot of Tom Ford Golden Peach. This is probably pot number five or six or seven, I don't even know now. I've been using it for so many years. It's what's almost always on my eyes when I'm in a hurry. I put the cream on first with my fingers, no brush needed, and then I pat on the powder to seal everything in and I get the most luminous, fresh, classic, peachy pink eye. It looks neutral, plays well with every other makeup you might choose to apply. Also always nearby is the By Terry Ombre Black Star in Bronze Moon. I've been talking about this shade since I started Beauty Professor 10 years ago and I still use it all the time. It is soft, it is so pretty on the eyes, it's a neutral taupe with some sparkle and it really sets. So once you apply it and blend it out, it's not going anywhere. This is kind of the original long wearing cream eyeshadow as far as I'm concerned. Terry nailed it so long ago. We all benefit because of that. For complexion, the Sisley Bronzer. It's the Fido Touche Sun Glow Bronzing Gel Powder. Long name, insanely good formulation. It's, it's always in my handbag. I put it on all the time. I have some on right now. It's just, it's luminous. It's second skin. It looks so natural. It's a warm, true tan. And I use my Syrah Artistic Cheek Brush for all my powder products. This one I've had for six years now and it's still holding up really well. This is a splurge, but it's one of those splurges I promise you use the whole thing up and be ready for another one. It's just that good. And then for blush, I love the Lawless make me blush blush in vintage love this is a great mauvey pink you can see i've had a lot of wear with this one it's it's soft it's got a kind of a touch of luminosity but not really you could almost say it's just like a cream in powder form and this mauvey pink i think brightens up every complexion it looks kind of like a dusty rose but on the face it just enlivens everything and that's what we want with a blush so it's universally flattering universally pretty it's often sold out, so if you see this particular shade in stock, I would snap it up. I said earlier that I use the Clay de Peau Concealer all the time. It is a holy grail for me. Creamy, long-wearing, crease-resistant. It comes in a vast shade range, and it's a cult classic for a reason. So my best shade for most of the year is Buff or Lips. I am very proud and very smitten with my Christian Odette go lightly shade. I still to this day have not encountered any lip color quite like this. My intent when I created it was that it would mimic that salmony pink nude that you see Audrey Hepburn wearing in Breakfast at Tiffany's. For me, it just feels like Holly Go Lightly. It brightens the face. It's really pigmented, so you can do a sheer application, kind of tapping it into the lips, or obviously with a single pass, actually, you get full opacity. It's creamy, it's long wearing, and it's just a really special shade that I've intended, and when I created it, I wanted it to look good on all complexions, and I really feel like we achieved that with this lipstick. And finally, for highlighter, here is the Westman Atelier Peau de Peche Super Loaded Tinted Highlight. This is probably my third or fourth one. It is just a very soft, luminous, peachy pink, but neutral, and you can wear it on the high points of your face. I can also wear it on my eyes. I feel like it's just versatile and it makes the skin look so lovely, fresh, ethereal, incandescent, all of these adjectives. So it's a weighty compact, well worth the investment. There you go, that wraps up my perennial favorites. So this concludes my favorites of 2021, my best of makeup for the year. 
I hope you enjoyed this discussion. I hope I was able to put some new products, potentially some new brands on your radar, but also I would love to know what products I've shared with you today that you love just as much as I do. This was so fun for me to discuss and to share, and I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did. I thank you for being alongside me for this video. I look forward to your comments below. And I will have my next video a companion to this and that will cover hair care, skin care, wellness, devices, body care in a couple of days as soon as I can get it edited. I'm wishing you a happy and a healthy and a blessed year and I look forward to all the content that is to come, all that I have to share with you guys forthcoming. Thank you so much for being here. In the meanwhile, as always, please don't forget to visit me at Beauty Professor, which can be found at beautyprofessor.com. Take care.